Iowa football is brought to you by Budweiser. Beechwood age for that clean, crisp taste. For all you do, this Bud's for you. And by True Value Hardware Stores. It's more than our name. It's our way of doing business. The Buckeye Horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio, where the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Buckeyes of Ohio State battle in the major Big Ten game. 90,000 fans will be trying to snap the Buckeyes out of a two-game losing streak. The Hawkeyes trying to nail down number eight and a major postseason bowl bid. Hi, everybody. Gene Clawson with Mike Seeley. Here in the shoe, Mike, a place where the Hawkeyes have not won since 1959, and Hayden Fry would like to win here because as a coach for the Hawkeyes and at SMU, he has not defeated the Buckeyes in Columbus. Well, it's going to be a tough job today, <clears throat> Gene, but I think Chuck Hartley, who came alive last week, set all kinds of records for Iowa, uh, national records, Big Ten records, had a great day, and I think they're going to be counting on his throwing arm today to keep that Iowa offensive alive. Of course, the Buckeyes have had their troubles on offense. Defensively, they've been a sound team all year long with sound linebacking and, of course, a great outside linebacker in Eric Humero. Well, Eric's had a great year. Uh, big man, 6'6", 250, came here as a quarterback, has made a great transition to the linebacker position, and now is one of their leading defensive players. Okay, it's a toss-up game with a key one for the Hawkeyes and the Buckeyes, and we'll have the action for you in just a moment over the Hawkeyes Sports Network. Clawson with Mike Selig, the big shoe in Columbus, Ohio. 90,000 fans here to see a red as Iowa's Hawkeyes face the Buckeyes of Ohio State. And a tremendous game for Chuck Hartley and Quinn Early at Northwestern a week ago. And let's hope Mike Selig, the Hawkeyes, can come close to duplicating that. Well, there's certainly the enthusiasm of, a, of an excellent college football game to start off today. The weather's great, enthusiasm's great, and I think it's going to be a hard-hitting football game. Buckeyes, of course, have not won here since 1959. They defeated the Buckeyes in Ohio, in Iowa City, a couple of years ago. It'll be Rob Houtland kicking off for the Hawkeyes. Teed up near side of the 35. Not much wind, 61 degrees, and it's Vince Workman and Carlos Snow back just inside the 10-yard line for Ohio State. Buckeyes have won, have lost two in a row. Here's Houtland kicking off. High kick. Snow comes up, takes it, bobbles it, and they fall on it at the 17-yard line. Snow bobbling Outland's high kick, and uh, Ridley was over to cover for the Hawkeyes. Workman falling on the ball, and Ohio State now will go on offense. Tom Tupa, that to be on the sidelines after coming here as a freshman. It's Tom Zach and Cursados took over the quarterback in duties. The Snow, Cooper as RBs and the wide receiver Vince Workman who shifted from tailback to a wide receiver midway in the season. Hawkeyes in a 52 defense and off goes to Harlow Snow. Flies right tackle and Brad Quast stepping in to make the stop for the Hawkeyes. Quast and J.J. Puck are the linebackers. Dave Haight, the middle guard. Cooper Snow, solid ball player. Snow, of course, the freshman. Higdon, an all-around great receiving tight end. And Ross, a very fine kick returner and receiver. Snazniak, as a freshman, started all the games for the Buckeyes a year ago. And Newland Haight moving from guard to center in all Big Ten for far. Little misdirection. Snow carrying, trying the other side of the Iowa line. Frost and Joe Schuster making the stop for the Hawkeyes. Beautiful day, 61 degrees. Hawkeyes, Mike trying to snap a little bit of a jinx. Mott and Burke at the ends. Kepi and Schuster, eight at the nose guard. Puck and Quast. Gene, Ross. Ross. Gene the jinx uh, of, of not winning here since 1959 is about the only thing that's left for Hayden to really break, and it'd be a great day to do that. Okay, defense, third and four for Ohio State on the Buckeye 22-yard line. This game just underway. Just one setback behind Tupa. Rolling out. Passing complete, 31-yard line. Good enough for the first down, a good hard hit. Newcomer in there, Anthony Cube. Well, they're just a short uh, pass for Tupa to roll out, see what's happening. And uh, Tupa's just land, standing there waiting for the ball in between the two Iowa defenders, and uh, nice play by Ohio State. Well, Cube. A freshman from Columbus, not listed on the two-deep roster. A surprise starter at a wide receiver for Ohio State. And off again to Snow. Again, a right tackle for the Hawkeyes, advancing to the 35-yard line where Joe Schuster 
This air ball, Minnesota, veteran, 6'5", 260, making the tackle. So far, Gene, they've been fairly conservative. They were running the ball middle of the line, not uh, trying to get wide. Uh, it was a safe pass that they threw in the third down situation. So apparently Earl Bruce wants to control that ball and establish them as the uh, powerful offensive unit. Against Wisconsin, 514 yards by the Badgers, but they turned the ball over seven times, and that hurt them, especially in the second half. Little fake of the drop by Tupa, being harassed now by Burke. He gets away from him and gets up to the 38-yard line. Mike Burke harassing Tupa, who could find no one deep had to eat the ball. Well, the thing that really stopped Tupa from throwing the ball initially was uh, Joe Schuster's hand being up in the air, and he had to step around him, and then he got in the grasp of uh, Mike Burke, who did a nice job. You see here on the replay, he's going to fake the, fake the run. Right here, he wants to throw the ball, but you see the left hand of Schuster come up, and then it's just uh, Tupa trying to get loose, and Mike Burke finally makes the tackle on him. Mike first overran him, but then recovered and made a stop, which brings up third and five, Ohio State. Buckeye 37. Tupa the drop, just gets the pass away, but it's overthrown, intended for Snow, and a pretty good rush that time. And so the Buckeyes will have to give up the ball, and it'll be Tom Tupa, the quarterback, back to kick. The first quarterback to lead the nation in punting since 19, I think, 53. Marciano is the ball game. Zeke Barkowski of Georgia Tech, I believe. It's a good trivia question. Marciano back to the 12-yard line. Doubtful whether he'd even make the trip. Well, I noticed in warm-ups, Gene Tupo can really lay the ball up high in the air. Nice spiral. He's just an excellent punter, and I think he has an excellent future probably for pro ball. 47.4 is average. The all-time leader at Ohio State, number one in the nation. He has boomed one 72 yards. Very little wind and a clear sky and 61 degrees. Snap right to Tupa, and he gets a boomer. High. Marciano calling for a fair catch. Takes it at the 12-yard line, and the Hawkeyes holding the Buckeyes in the first series. Now take over for the first offensive series. Hartley, the Iowa quarterback. T formation with Hudson and Harmon. And here's Hartley giving it to Harmon. Harmon right up the middle. Short yardage and the stop being made by Showalter. Hawkeyes will be interchanging. Cook, Flag, and Clark at tight end. Dave Alexander, Herb Wester at the tackles. Watkins and Early, of course, uh, two of the finest receivers in the country, and Cook does everything. Schmidt, Poynton, Anderson, Alexander, Wester. I think we might have Divis seeing a lot of action also in at right guard for the Hawkeyes. A second down, and it's a rollout right across the line to flag. Oops. Ruled a completion and a fumble, and this could turn out to be a Buckeye touchdown, but they're going to call the ball back. Incompletion. A hard hit that time. Or no, they're calling the completion. And the ball dead, but it goes over to Ohio State on the 27, Mike. Well, Gene, uh, I think what they're saying is the ball was down. Uh, to see a nice uh, fake, they really uh, threw the defense off right here. A tremendous hit on Mike Flagg, and the ball is dead right there when it hits the ground, and uh, that's the way the official uh, ruled it, and that's the way it'll come back. Uh, first and 10 for Ohio State on about the 26-yard line. Leonard Gerd, one of the linebackers, scooping it up. That was a tough hit on Flagg. And Ohio State now with the first break of the ball game, first and 10, just inside the Iowa 36-yard line. Two wide out, single set back behind Tom Tupa, and a long count. Puts it in the hands of the fullback, Cooper. Tupa to Cooper and Dave Haight. Making the tackle right at the 25-yard line. Haight injured last week. And I understand he has been questionable all week long, as have a lot of the Hawkeye players. Well, you're normally not going to keep Dave Haight out of the ball game unless his leg's broken. Obviously, he isn't broken. He, I noticed in warm-ups, he was running pretty good. So hopefully he can stay healthy for the entire game because they're going to need him in there. The freshman, Tony Coop, into the ball game. He was in on the first series. He's a newcomer. Ohio State with a second and eight at the Iowa 24. First quarter, no score. Guys playing a rather shallow secondary as Tupa makes the drop. Schuster trying to get to him. The ball is away, and it's 
out of bounds. Again, good coverage by the Hawkeyes deep in the pass intended for Jeff Ellis, the understudy at tight end to Alex Higdon. We really did do a good job of covering that time. Tupa had plenty of time, but uh, he looked short, and then he looked long, and then he kind of looked intermediate, and all three areas were covered, and speaks well for the Iowa defense. Burton Hanks coming up. He plays the right corner. James P Pipkins, the left corner. Sistrunk, right Sistrunk at free safety, and Kerry Burt at strong safety. Ball is at about the 24. Third down coming up. And eight yards as Workman is the wide out. And coming over to cover him, Anthony Wright. Tip, or Tupa making the drop. It is down the middle. Complete at the five-yard line. And Ross is in for the score. Tupa had time. Hit Ross inside the five. And it's six points, Ohio State. Ross was the guy who scored in the opening play on the bomb against Michigan State three weeks ago here. Well, Ross had plenty of time to clear across the field, and he speaks well for the offensive line for Ohio State. You see Tupa looking from left to right, and he just lays it right in one-on-one uh, -on -one there, coverage, and uh, you see Ross run right around the other Iowa defender and in for six points. Just five minutes into the ball game, and the Buckeyes prompts in to try the point after, and he hits his... 48 in a row over two years his record this year 22 of 22 you see on the replay here the time that uh, Tupa has the uh, hand went up the air but didn't didn't bother him does get the ball nice catch by Ross and then it's just a matter he uh, maybe delayed a little bit too long I'm sure the coach will point that out to him in the, in the films but uh, nice touchdown pass Hawkeye football continues after these local messages on the Hawkeye Sports Network Tomorrow's kickoff near the far sidelines, and as he catches the ball, goes out of bounds right at the five-yard line, putting the Hawkeyes in a hole here on their second possession. Well, it's a young uh, receiver back there, and it's a costly mistake. We do start in a, in a real deep hole here. Watkins and Early, the receivers, handoff going to the tailback up the middle of the 10. That's it. Uh, Harmon cuts the outside of the 20, where he's hit down by Zach Dumas. Harmon. Harmon. Like he did about he five games ago, but he still is bothered with the bad ankle. But a big first down, taking the Hawks from the five to the 21, Mike. Well, that's a real big 15-yard gain for Kevin. He uh, makes a real nice move here. You'll see him once he gets through the line of scrimmage. A little spin move there that you try to teach backs and often can't, but a big play for an Iowa senior. Nice spin on Ray Jackson, the free safety. The Hawkeyes have a first down just about at the 21-yard line. Single setback, Hudson, is the drop by Hartley. Goes down the middle, there's Flag catching in the midfield, breaks the tackle, goes to the 40-yard line. Flag, who fumbled after getting a tough hit earlier, a great catch at midfield, and the Hawkeyes on the move down to the Buckeye 41-yard line. Well, you have to credit the coaching staff to come back to him. You'll see on the replay, Chuck gives a little pump and then just lays it right over the defender. And that's easy to do with Flag. Now watch the hit there, makes a nice hit on Flag. He, he shakes it off. He's looking right into the sun, Gene. It doesn't seem like much, but I noticed yesterday down on the field uh, that sun is right in the receiver's eyes, and it's very difficult to see the ball. That was not a defensive back, but a linebacker, Andrew Bird, who was covering. First and ten Hawkeyes. Little, little flip to, to Harmon. He's at the 35, inside the 30 to about the 28. The little shovel pass with the snap, and Ray Jackson the tackle at free safety. But well, we aren't going to sit still and let them just score seven points and not come back. And Hayden's uh, opened things up already here. And an excellent play calling so far. You see Kevin get the ball in a little flip, and then it's just all, all on Kevin's uh, own abilities, and he gets another first down. Just making that typical head-shoulder fake. Iowa with the ball at the 28. Hash mark far side. First quarter, Hawks trail 7-0 here in Columbus. A little delay, a handoff to Harmon, right side, tries to get to the outside where he stopped at the 25 by Dumas. Gee, it's very obvious that Kevin is healthier uh, than he has been in recent weeks because uh, he's really throwing the hips and his body into the to his moves, and that's a sign that his ankle's much better. Ohio State, sort of a desperate game for them because they've lost three. They are 5-3-1, three, and one. seven bowl scouts here today. They've lost to Indiana 31-10. Michigan State 13-7. It was a scoreless second half. And Wisconsin really surprised him last week, 
Here's Harmon again, up the middle, gets to about the 22-yard line. Iowa staying on the ground, Gerd making the tackle. Harmon into the ball game, 111 carries. Leading Iowa ball carriers picked up 533 yards and a 4.3 per carry average. Well, so far, he's been the workhorse of the running game. We haven't given the ball to the fullback yet, and obviously Hayden's decided that if he's healthy, he's going to run Kevin, and it's working very well so far. The first key third-down situation for the Hawkeyes on a third and four, Bayless. Now in the Iowa lineup. It's a power eye, Bayless, Harmon, and Hudson. And uh, the fake handoff, and uh, Hartley gets the ball away just incomplete. Hartley had pressure that time, just got the ball away. It was a little bit short. Hudson, the intended receiver, and uh, the field goal kicking team comes in. You see the fake to Bayless who goes through the line. Uh, Chuck wants to throw the ball there, but they saw the good coverage, and then uh, very intelligently just whipped the ball off to the side to David Hudson, who uh, was just a little bit th uh, thrown a little bit low, and David couldn't catch the ball. Outland kicking, Hartley holding at the 29-yard line. The kick is away. It has distance, and it's good. Hawkeyes get on the board, and for Houtland, that's 17 of 25. The Hawks driving from their five down into Buckeye territory. We'll be back with more first quarter action after this. The Hawkeyes on the board, trailing now 7-3. Snow returning the high-angle kick to the 35-yard line, and it's a, an old T set with three backs behind, two for the quarterback. He bottles the ball. A big stack up at the 35-yard line. Tupa, I think, uh, recovered. Kind of strange to see the old straight tee with three backs in the line behind the quarterback. It is. They do a lot of faking in the backfield off that set, and that time there was just a bad exchange between the quarterback and the center for Ohio State. Jeff Uhlenhake, their center and all-conference guard a year ago. A 73-yard, six-play drive covering the two and a half minutes for the Hawkeyes. And Houtland on target with a tremendous kicker. Second and 13 now for the Buckeyes on their 32 as Tupa takes the drop. Harassed. They get him back to the 20. Gets the pass away. It's intercepted at 40-yard line by Quast. Quast is at the 30. Out of bounds at the 25. Brad Quast. Hake keeping Quast from getting the touchdown. Well, that's a big play. We gave them a break with a fumble. And uh, we were talking just a minute ago about needing a break on the defensive unit. Brad Quast provided at that time. Tupa actually threw the ball a little high over to his receiver. And Brad, Brad, you'll see in the replay here, is very alert. Uh, Tupa has plenty of time. Actually gets good pressure there and then uh, tries to throw it. Maybe shouldn't have. He just overthrows the receiver and uh, actually two two people trying to intercept it for Iowa. I think it's J.J. Puck along with Boston. Nice return for a strong linebacker. Uh, give credit to Joe Schuster. He got a big paw up right in the hands of Tupa. Hudson, the lone running back. Hartley, the quarterback, and now early. Slots to the left side for the Hawkeyes. At the 25-yard line, a ball bobbled by Hartley, and he loses a couple of yards. Hartley bobbled a snap from center, but uh, he kept control. Sullivan, the nose guard from Timberlake, Ohio, making the stop. Kumarow, the great outside linebacker, heavily recruited as a quarterback. But he saw Tom Zack on the scene, decided maybe he should play somewhere else. He's an excellent athlete and has had a good career at Ohio State. Hawkeyes now second and 12 in the Iowa 27-yard line. One tight end, a little shift into the backfield. Pass, intercepted inside the 20-yard line. A little bit underthrown. And intercepting for the Buckeyes, I think, the right quarterback, Dumas. He had time to throw, but Chuck just a little bit short, and it's Ohio State's ball in their 21. You see a ground level here. Chuck's going to roll out to his left, and it's difficult to throw this way. I think it's William White that intercepts the ball here, number 37, just steps in front of Watkins, and very heads up play by Travis to, to make sure that, that White doesn't get away and uh, run for a touchdown. We move to further action in the first quarter. I have a feeling that the Hawkeyes can get through this first quarter staying close because... The first quarter in the past has killed us over here. Two for the quarterback with a lone setback. Cooper makes the drop, passes right over the line, completes the tight end to the 38-yard line. A good hard hit on Ellis by J.J. Puck. 
an advance of about 70 yards. So far, the Hawkeyes have not been able to get to Tupa. Well, they haven't thrown to Ellis much this season, but they certainly are today. That time they brought him across the defense, and you see Puck hit him, and then uh, Terry Burt come up and make the, the final hit to bring Ellis down to the ground. Puck now the big guy, even for a linebacker, 6'3 and 212. Second and three, Ohio, just shy of the 40-yard line. He goes to work, and he's in the secondary, gets the first down. At the Buckeye 47. You're watching Iowa football on the Hawkeye Sports Network. Buckeyes with a first down on the Ohio 46 yard line. Again, the old 3D T formation behind Tom Tooper. Long count, it's the fullback Cooper. Just a power play up the middle. To midfield where Myron Keffey made the tackle. Boy, shades of the 1950s in Woodrow Hayes' offense. Sure does, Gene. It uh, gives them a lot of options in that backfield. And uh, so far, we've been able to stop it. They haven't fooled us or anything, but uh, it's interesting to see that type of formation. The ball is at the 49-yard line. Ohio State's ball with a second and seven. Half a minute to go. First quarter, the Hawkeyes trailed 7-3. Tupa, again, this one to Snow, and Snow in Iowa territory to the 45, where Mike Burke makes the tackle. Something new, they're running off a 3D T. It'll be third and very short. Well, Gene, initially they started running to the strong side in just uh, like a sweep series. Now that time it was a counter back and uh, broke Snow into the open a little bit, uh, so it's uh, third and very short. Hawkeyes getting Steve Thomas into the ball game. Thomas did not make the Northwestern trip. That's the end of the first quarter with the score Ohio State 7, Iowa 3. We'll be back after this. Inside the Iowa 45, it's a third and less than a yard, and they get to Cooper. Oh, he's hit hard right on the line of scrimmage. The big fullback, 240 pounder out of Wyandanche, New York. One of the 15 seniors playing their last game. I doubt whether he made it. It's very close, Gene. I don't know what they're going to they're going to measure it or not, but uh, it's very close. Schuster coming up from the bottom of that stack. Tupa, by the way, in the first quarter, four of seven, one interception, 47 yards, and I was Chuck Hartley, three of five, 56 yards, and one interception. The measurement and the Buckeyes come up about a foot short, and a chorus of boos from around the shoe here in Columbus as Earl Bruce sends his kicking team out and Tupa who had a kick go off the side of his foot the last time. First boomer was 50 yards and then a 36 yarder and you never know though. Watch the fake kick. He has two blockers, two backs right up behind the center. Let's see if it's, now it's right snap back to Tupa and he's going to punt away. High kick. Marciano lets it go. And it'll be down at about the five-yard line. Nice kick by the nation's number one booter, Tupa. And they kill it at the five where the Hawkeyes take over their first series here in the second quarter. Well, the fans are upset that uh, Earl Bruce chose to kick the ball, but it sure uh, looks like it was a good decision. Puts Iowa in the hole again back in the five-yard line. And uh, that time, Peter had to look right into the sun again as the quarters changed here. He's looking right into the sun, Gene. That's a difficult thing to do. Earl Bruce's record you saw there against the Hawkeyes, but one of those losses when he was coaching at Iowa State. Came up to coach the Cyclones after one year at Tampa. He was an assistant here under Woody Hayes prior to that a very successful high school coach here in his home state of Ohio. Harmon and Hudson, the high backs behind Chuck Hartley. Hawks pinned down at their five-yard line. It goes to Harmon. And left tackle. Squeezes out a couple of yards, but Iowa has not had good field position. Mike McCray, the defensive right end from Dayton, making the tackle. Hawkeyes losing the ball in the first series on the fumble after the pass completion to Mike Flagg, who took a tremendous hit. And then the interception, stopping a drive that looked like it could have wound up in the end zone. The Hawkeyes here with a second and eight. At the Iowa 7. Hart leaves drop. He gets the ball away, and it is no good. Intended for Hudson. Hudson was the not the primary receiver, obviously. He was trying to go deep. 
but Showalter put the rush on, and he just did get the ball away. Gene, we had four receivers going deep, two on each side, and Chuck thinks he can get it away. Then he realizes where he is on the field and tries to get it to a short pass, and his arm is hit just as he's throwing it to David Hudson. Hudson was open, the safety valve receiver. Now we have a third and eight. Box at their seven, Harmon and Hudson in eye backs and two wide receivers. Tough spot for the Iowa quarterback. And the handoff goes to Harmon, goes to the outside. He's at the 20 yard line, gets the first down. Nice run as Thielman makes the stop. Give credit to that Iowa offensive line. He had a hold for which to go and scoot it. Well, this is a big play. They they really thought we were going to be throwing the ball, and they, Kevin gets the ball, and again, the blocking was nice. Kevin's own abilities are great, and uh, big first down in a, in a very difficult situation. Harmon taking the Hawkeyes out of a deep hole. They had it back at the five-yard line. It's now up to the 22 with a first down. Hudson, the lone setback. Early to the wide side of the field for the Hawkeyes. But it goes to Hudson up the middle. Still on his feet at about the 27-yard line. Hudson, a tough guy, 235-pounder. Spielman, the All-American, and Camaro. Harmon now is 7 for 51. Well, he's Pretty healthy again, yeah, Gene. It's really nice to see that, too, because uh, not only is he getting the yardage, but you can just see with the confidence that his leg is better, and uh, the moves he's making are the old Kevin Harmon, Harmon moves, and it's nice to see that. Second, and let's call it six at the Iowa 27. This time, Travis Watkins caught a beautiful touchdown pass against Northwestern last week. He's the wide receiver. And again, they're in on Hudson immediately. Right across the line of scrimmage was Spielman and Sullivan. Almost when the exchange was made, the defenders were there. Spielman uh, and well, Mike Sullivan made the right move there. He uh, just made a little loop around the center and uh, got to David Hudson just as he was getting the handoff. And then uh, Spielman comes in and puts the final touches on. Spielman, of course, uh, highly heralded. First game in which he played for Buckeyes. He led the team in tackles out at uh, Oregon. Third down now and 10 for the Hawkeyes. Hartley, the rollback, decides to go deep. And it's incomplete. Harvard's at the 40-yard line. The ball was there. Harvard's uh, just couldn't find the handle. And a good, pretty good scramble by Chuck Hartley. He was getting pressure, Gene, and he just rolled to his left and uh, bought time and found an open receiver, but uh, just didn't connect with it. Marv Cook standing at the 8-yard line, and Everett Ross is at the 40-yard line of Ohio State. A good kick by Cook, sending Ross back a little bit. Takes it at the 32. Changes direction. Gets up to the 40-yard line. And we'll be back with more on the Hawkeye Sports Network after these local messages. It's in possession at their 40-yard 40, 40 line. And now 7 of 51. That was a 44-yard punt, by the way, by Cook. The pass, it is downfield and complete at the 30-yard line. It's to Ross. Ross inside the 10. He is gone into the end zone. Ross. His second score. Tupa on the money. You see Tupa has plenty of time here again, and Ross is a fine receiver. He's had the uh, previous uh, touchdown pass. Catches the ball, it's thrown low, and that's just a matter of uh, Ross's abilities. Spins away from the uh, defender there, and then it's just off to the races. Gets a nice block downfield for six points. Two Hawkeyes had a chance at him, but give Ross credit. He made a couple of nice moves. Here's Fonts for the PAT, and it's up and good. So Ohio State takes the lead, 14-3. After the kickoff, the Hawkeyes take over at the 15-yard line, a 15-yard return by Stewart. Hawkeyes now down 14-3. Hartley and harassed pretty thoroughly as he now makes the drop. Downfield caught and out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Marv Cook. Cook, as usual, doing it all. Catching the ball, blocking, punting. 
all three of those tight ends are Mr. Steady, and Marv's had a great season. You'll see him come across the uh, defense here right in front of Spillman. Marv is going to throw. Marv's going to catch the ball there just as he's going out of bounds. First down. Two touchdown receptions by Everett Ross. The last one was a beauty. Did a great job of running after he caught the football. It was a 60-yard drive overall by Ohio State. Plenty of time, though. We have 11.08 to go in the first half. Bass now in as the lone setback for Iowa with three wideouts. And Hart leave a long count. And again, uh, a good rush. Hart leaves going to run with the ball. He's at the 30, 35, 40. Goes down at the 43-yard line. Good presence of mind that time. Spielman covering, but Hartley picks up the first down. Everybody was covering deep, and he had an opening and took it. You'll see a great move by uh, Chuck here. Number 99 is coming in, going to try to put a hit on him. He just spins away, and then he realizes that uh, he might be able to get more by running than passing, and then wisely goes to the ground before Spielman makes a hit on him. Mike McCray just overshot him. Bass and Harmon now in the Iowa backfield. From a pro set to Ibax. Ball is up the 43-yard line. And off to Harmon. And McCray is in there to drop him. Loss in the play. Michigan State with McAllister optioning did a pretty good job at the corners for Ohio State. But this has been a tough team to run against. It is a tough team. So far we've had pretty good success. But in this play the defense does a good job of staying where they're supposed to be. Uh, Kevin gets the ball deep and then uh, two people come up and make a nice hit on him. So the Hawkeyes now with a second and 11. 10 plus to go. First half. Slots to the near side. Hartley passing complete up to midfield. The receiver, Marv Cook, coming just over the line of scrimmage and Gerd making the tackle for the Buckeyes right at midfield. Great catch. Oh, and we need something to, to happen. It seems like our tight ends are always there. And this time Chuck just lays it out really nice to the right side. You'll see him looking straight downfield. And then you see Cook coming across the field. He just lays it out. Marv makes a nice stretched out catch. Uh, gets hit immediately, but a nice game for the Hawkeyes. Harmon and Hudson now in the Iowa backfield. Harvards comes in at wide receiver, replacing Quinn Early. Third and three Hawks at midfield. Buckeyes, their patented 52 defense. The pitch to Harmon. Cuts in. Is at the 40 yard line on his feet. Go. He's at the 30. Being chased. Cuts to the outside. He's at the 10. Kevin Harmon, six points. A beautiful, beautiful run. And the Buckeye player heard on the play. But Iowa, a big run. The longest run, I think, of the season for any Iowa back. And it's a big six points, Hawks. Gene, I'm sure it's the largest or uh, longest run we've had. I think. Uh, no question about it. The longest one before was by Kevin, about 31 yards. 31 yards, right. And that was just a great effort by Kevin and, and the entire offensive line working together. Uh, the backs uh, in front of him sweep. You'll see the, the play here. They just pitch it. He's going to run to his left. Gets a nice block from Hudson. Schmidt's out in front. And then it's just Kevin making his spin. Almost lost his balance there. And what's nice to see is have him outrun the defensive backs here. He realizes he's getting chased, and then it's a nice dive into the end zone for six points for Kevin. That's wonderful to see. Ray Jackson and David Brown just couldn't reach him, and Spielman made a dive, and the All-American missed. Harmon now nine carries. He has 100 yards. And McCray, their fine outside linebacker, is on his back at the 50-yard line. Hawkeyes are going to go for two. They trail 14-9. Houtman has time. The pass, it is incomplete. The intended receiver, Marv Cook. Tough one to hold on to. Brown covering for Ohio State. 14-9, the Hawkeyes within five with 9-10 to go, first half. We'll be back with more second quarter action after this. It was forced to punt. We now pick up action later in the second quarter. Good eight-yard return by the Hawkeyes, who trail by 5, 14-9, 6.41 remaining. First half. It's nice to see this good field position, Gene. It's a lot better starting at your 40 rather than your five-yard line. Tupanau has punted for the last one, 48. 36 and 50. Hartley, the QB, Ibax. 
Brown, and he's got a hole in the middle. Cuts left, cuts right, inside the 50 at the 48. He is running like the Kevin Harmon of old. He sure is, and it uh, looks like uh, Dave Alexander's a little slow getting up, but you got to credit the offensive line again. You'll see the nice hole here for Kevin. You got the lead blocker of Hudson opening things up, and then Kevin just makes a nice move to his right, and then back to his left, and back to his right. And he's, uh, he's just looking very good today. And somebody put a good number on Chris Spielman, the All-American linebacker for Ohio State. Kevin now up to 111 yards, 10 rushes, as Bayless and Hudson now take over in the backfield. It's a pro set for the Hawkeyes on the first down of the Buckeye 48. This time it goes to Hudson. Hudson, the big fullback. David Hudson. Show Walter drops him at about the 43-yard line. The area in which Hudson does not get full credit, and that's blocking. Well, he's key to our, our running game whenever he isn't carrying the ball, and he does an excellent job, especially on the corners, of either hooking the guy or knocking him out to open the hole for the other running back, and you really do have to give him and the offensive line a lot of credit for what uh, Kevin Harmon's done today. Third down at about, uh, or second down, excuse me, at about five for the Hawkeyes, a long five. Harmon and Hudson, the two setbacks. The little flip to... Harmon, and he spins in the middle, bobbled the ball momentarily, a little shovel pass. Iceman in for McCray, who was shaken up earlier on the touchdown run, making the tackle. Third now coming up in about four. You see the pass from uh, Hartlett to, to uh, Kevin, who really alertly, the ball bobbled a little bit, but uh, made sure he had it before he started running, and then uh, gained a yard or two. Trying to find an opening, trying to find behind Bill Anderson, the Hawkeye center. Keith, third down and three for the Hawks at Ohio State's 41-yard line. Hartley drops back, passes the near side. It is caught and out of bounds. Marv Cook, the sure-handed one with 30 receptions going into the ball game, and it's an Iowa first down as Spielman makes the drop. Well, Chuck Hartley has become so confident back there. He just knows where to look and how to look, and uh, you'll see right here he's, uh, he's going to be pretty clever. Drops back, and when Marv cooks a target, it's easy to see him, but uh, throws the ball just over the defender again. Right there, and then you see Spielman come over and knock, Cook out, or, yeah, uh, knock Marv out of bounds. So the Hawks, first down. Ohio State's 21-yard line. Hawkeyes have converted three of six third down situations. Bayless and Hudson. The flip goes to Bayless. Cuts back in. Tries to go outside. Short gain to about the 26. Spielman over to... Again, make the hit. Hawkeyes have used Harmon most of the time at running back. Bayless has had just brief action. And Hudson used mainly as a blocker. Iowa trying to take the lead here on this series with 4.20 to go first half and trailing 14-9. Well, we've had a, real, a lot of success so far, G, moving the football against them, and uh, if we can put a score on the board here, it'll really threaten their uh, defensive unit. Harmon and Hudson in an eye set. It goes to Harmon. Fakes going in. Has to cut back, and he's short of the first down with third down coming up. Andrew Gerd. Not out fake that time by Kevin. They have done a pretty good job rushing. I was quarterback Chuck Hartley, and I think a, a less veteran quarterback uh, would have really had a tough first half. Well, on that replay, you saw where Kevin it was just a nice effort to get back to the line of scrimmage because it was well covered by the by the Ohio State defense. Grant Goodman in as the lone running back behind Hartley, but a obvious pass situation here and a long count by Chuck. Pretty good uh, protection. He is going down to Travis Watkins and a little bump down at the goal line. It is thrown out of bounds. And I think Clark, uh, or Cook rather, maybe uh, checking with the referee Gil Marshman about possibility of a, a bump there on Travis Watkins. Well, I think Hayden, uh, Hayden on the sideline was talking to the official there, thinking that it was bumped. Uh, he's looking for, for Quinn Early to, on the right side, and then realizes he can't get it to Quinn, and just throws it up for uh, Travis to try to get it. And you see a little bump just as he's catching the ball, but he was out of bounds. I think the official read it that way. Howland to attempt a 41-yarder. Hartley the holding. The snap and the kick underway. The distance is there, and it's good. It is good. The Hawkeyes come to within two 
It is 14-12 Ohio. I will return after this on the Hawkeye Sports Network. All giving him six points so far in the ball game. He is within four points of Tommy Nichols' overall scoring record for the Hawkeyes. He already has the field goal record. Now pumped up to 51. He is third in Big Ten field goals and fourth in kick scoring. And here he is kicking off. A very high kick. Workman coming up, takes it at the 18-yard line. Coming right up the middle. And is a flag is down as he advances to the 38. Workman taking the high kick and the tackle by Clark. He will go to direction in the same series. Two for the quarterback, gives it to Snow. Snow trying to cut in a right tackle is stopped right on the line of scrimmage. Steve Thomas making the tackle, no gain on the play. Snow frequently, when he's tried to cut back, has slipped and gone down. Gene, yesterday when we were on the field, uh, if you remember how hard that surface is, and I, I mentioned it might be slippery, uh, obviously he's having trouble, especially running to his right as he goes down to the sloped field there, his right foot slipping out from under him just as he wants to make his cut up field. Field here, by the way, is very hard. There's, there's not much fiber down there in the synthetic surface. Second and nine, let's call it, inside the Iowa 25-yard line for the Buckeyes. Snow again. Finds an opening, gets inside the 20, fumble. Snow fumbling the ball. And we'll wait for the unstacking down there to see who has it. Good defensive play by the Hawkeyes. Steve Thomas coming, coming up with a football. Carlos Snow fumbling at the 20. And the Hawks still have a chance here with a minute 10. Bayless and Hudson. Your running backs, it's been Chuck Hartley all the way at quarterback. Snow 8 for 20. And here's Hartley giving the ball off to Bayless. Bayless finds running room and gets up to the 30-yard line. Bayless hit by Ray Jackson, the free safety. The Hawkeyes have, I think, all three of their timeouts. They do, and we're in the last minute of play in the first half. Hawks within two. See in the replay here, a, a nice handoff to Bayless, and then he uh, gets a block there from, from David Hudson. Second and short. Hawkeyes now, though, facing the clock. Hartley passes complete, 45-yard line, and so Watkins, he goes out of bounds at the Ohio State 46. Spielman over to knock him out of bounds, but the clock stops with 33 seconds. Nice play to Watkins, his 25th reception. Once again, Chuck just uh, sees that things are covered, and then he sees the rush and gets away from everything, sets up and throws to Travis, who's coming across the field, and wisely gets out of bounds with the help of the Ohio State players. Harvard slip went down, unable to throw a block there for Travis. Iowa first down, 33 seconds remaining, first half. Hawks from near midfield. It's right down the middle, it's caught to Cook. Cook at the 28-yard line. And Gerd making the stop, and the clock stopped with 26 seconds to go. The Hawkeyes calling a timeout. By Chuck Hartley, the Hawkeyes on the move with just 33 seconds remaining in the first half. Jeff Croston now at uh, defensive left tackle. Dave Alexander out of the ballgame at the moment. Up to the line of scrimmage, the Buckeye 28. The Hawkeyes have a chance here. The final seconds of the first half to take the lead. Pass overthrown. Trying to get it into the hands of uh, Cook. He was well covered, and it was just uh, tossed a little bit high. Gerd covering well. Hartley now 9 of 15 for 140 yards, and Cook has caught 4 for 54. Clock stopped with 22 seconds to go. Buckeye defense has not allowed a TD via the pass for the last 11 quarters. Hawkeye scoring the TD on the run, a 50-yarder by Kevin Harmon. Hudson alone behind Hartley with 22 seconds and a second and 10. Hartley's drop. It is caught by Cook at the eight-yard line, and he goes to the five. Marv Cook, how does the guy get open play after play after play? Dumas saving a touchdown. Gee, he's a very smart receiver, and uh, it's just a pleasure to watch him run patterns and get the open. He knows where to go to get the opening. Knows how to read linebackers, and that's his key read. Here you see Chuck setting up, and again, finds Marv in the open. Uh, seems to always have a step on the guy, Gene, and it's... Uh, it's a pleasure to watch him run patterns and catch the ball and then run with it afterwards. And a pleasure to watch that offensive line 
give him good protection. He has had time to throw, and if you can give a Chuck Hartley time, he's going to hurt you. Hawkeyes now just shy of the five-yard line with 14 seconds remaining, trying to take the lead here against Ohio State with a two-point difference right now. Early left, Watkins the slot. Harvard's to the near side as Hartley makes his drop. It is caught in and out of the hands, I should say, at the two-yard line, nine seconds remaining. The intended receiver, Watkins, Jackson covering for the Buckeyes. Nine seconds. Time for maybe one more play, Mike, before, if it's unsuccessful, you go for three. Well, it's uh, nice to be in this position right at the end of the half to be to to have nine seconds left. Go for this final play and then uh, bring Rob in. If we don't get the if we don't get the touchdown, uh, it should be a little chip shot for him. Well, as you can see, uh, great first half stats for Chuck Hartley. Crowd getting into the ball game now. It'll be a quick throw through the line, making the tackle Sullivan before the snap. Flag down as Iowa calls for a timeout. Hawks have used their last timeout. We're down to nine seconds as Iowa comes up to the line of scrimmage. One setback. Hartley, short drop. The pass early, just overthrown. Four seconds to go. It's the only play you could have. You There wasn't enough time on the clock, really, to let him get set, scramble. He had to just make the quick drop and throw. These last two plays, the crowd has really come alive. And Chuck, it was a design play. They knew it was single coverage over there. And he just overthrew Quinn slightly. And uh, good coverage by, by uh, the defense there. But uh, now we're going to go for three points. Quinn had uh, a step or two on William White. Outland will be flying from 22 yards. Distance on. It's good. The Hawkeyes take the lead. Outland's third three-pointer of the first half. And the Hawkeyes go into intermission with a one-point edge. And that's the end of the first half. Again, the score, Iowa 15, Ohio State 14. We'll be back with our halftime guest, Gail Blevins, the new head softball coach at the University of Iowa, after these local messages on the Hawkeye Sports Network. Time running out of the first half and the stats, 2-1 to one in first downs for the Hawkeyes. And I think very significant, the fact I was held the Buckeyes to only 46 on the ground. We have to give our defensive unit credit for that. Uh, 46 uh, rushing yards for Ohio State's an embarrassment probably, Gene. But uh, Iowa offense over 300 yards in the first half. Time of possession fairly even. It's been a real exciting first half. And another interesting uh, statistic is we've averaged 43 yards a punt for Marv Cook this half. And we'll be back with the start of the third quarter after this on the Hawkeye Sports Network. Gene Clawson with Mike Seelig. Iowa leading here at intermission, 15-14, as we get set to go into the third quarter and back to receive Omero's punt, or kickoff, rather, will be Marciano and Stewart. Hawkeyes, of course, had to play catch-up in the entire first half. Ross scoring first on a 24-yard pass, then Houtland's field goal narrowing the margin at the end of the first quarter, 7-3. Harmon getting a 50-yard dash to put the Hawkeyes within five. And then two Houtland field goals of 42 and 22, pushing the Hawkeyes in the lead at intermission. Hawkeye receivers are within the five as Panamaro, good strong leg, does the kicking off. Prance does the points after and the field goal kicking for Ohio State. And here we go. Line drive kick. Taken into the end zone and down there. Marciano using good judgment. Telecast of today's game is authorized by the University of Iowa. It is intended solely for the private use of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or other use of the accounts and descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the University of Iowa is strictly prohibited. Just over 90,000 here in the shoe, the big horseshoe on the Buckeye campus in Columbus. Iowa with the ball on its 20-yard line. Defense has done a great job in the offense as Kirkwood had had to. Harmon and Hudson. High backs behind Hartley. Two wide receivers. Hartley going to throw on the first play. He escapes one tackler. Passes in 
incomplete. Trying to hit either uh, Hudson or Harmon. His main receiver covered deep downfield early. So the Hawkeyes have a second and ten. Hartley, 10 of 19, 162 yards, one interception. Ohio State has not allowed a touchdown via the pass in the last 12 quarters. So that's a goal for the Hawkeyes, but more importantly, just win this ball game. Right, Mike? That's right, Gene. And uh, it's important in the second half here to get established, and uh, sure Hayden has a good uh, offensive strategy set up. Hudson alone back behind. It's going down the middle, wide open, Travis Watkins. Hit down at the 41-yard line. Travis wide open. Dumas finally recovered to make the tackle. Watkins coming in the ball game, the third leading receiver with 24. You see on the replay that uh, David Hudson's wide open on the right side also, but uh, Travis Watson down the middle. You see him wide open, and Chris Spielman gets downfield here, I think, to help make the tackle, and that guy's all over the field. But uh, Travis does a good job of tucking the ball here and uh, making sure he doesn't fumble. Watkins rapidly joining Quinn Early as a top receiver for the Hawkeyes. Here's Harmon. Finds the opening at left tackle. Scoops through for pretty good yardage to the 45-yard line. Hawkeyes running attack had to be in question prior to this ball game because of not only injuries to the running backs, but uh, also the men up front. Well, you see, Kevin, 12 rushes, 119 yards, one touchdown. Uh, the longest run was 50 yards, I believe, in the first half for the TD, and he's really looked brilliant today. Second and seven for the Hawkeyes on the Iowa 45-yard line. Opening moments of the quarter. The fake down the middle. It's overthrown. A little bit overthrown to... Marv Cook, one of the few times that Hartley is going to misfire to the big guy. Second down now coming up and six. Hawkeyes try to keep something rolling here. In the opening moments of the third quarter. Well, the big uh, tight end is wide open, usually wide open, and that time we just overthrew him slightly, Gene. But uh, as you said, you won't do that very often. But it's nice to see us moving the ball here in the initial part of the second half. One freshman in the secondary for Ohio State, and that's Zach Dumas from Deptford, New Jersey. Looks like uh, the blitz is going to be coming here. Everybody moving up on the line. And here it comes. Hartley has the pass deflected, and it's incomplete. He, was, he wanted to get it down deep too early. The rush on that time and deflected, so the Hawkeyes forced into a punting situation for the third time. Well, that's a real shame, Gene, because uh, Early had his man beaten. Had we been able to lay the ball up for him, I think he could have outrun the, the defender quite easily. Cook, who the first half punted twice for a 43-yard average, and Ross, the receiver, caught two touchdown passes. Another nice kick by Cook. Taken at about the 13-yard line. Ross up the middle to about the 30-yard line. Tripped up by Clark and Jim Riley. Ohio State just shy of its 30-yard line. Announcers for this telecast have been selected by Rasmussen Communications Management Corporation and approved by the University of Iowa. Hawkeye defense held Snow to 20 first half yards, Workman to 10, and Cooper to 8. They ran out of the three deep old T offensive set, a good part of the first half. It's a regular T now, Snow getting it. Slowed up by Puck behind the line. I think it was uh, Puck and Schuster finally put the stopper on him. So the Hawkeyes in the first half held the Buckeyes to just 46 running yards and 18 carries. And in passing yardage, 147 to the Hawks, 162 and 304 overall. Gene, it's uh, second down and long here. It'd be nice to get the, the big defensive play out of it. The tight end in a wing back position now, and I backs behind Tufa. And the handoff uh, again goes to the tailback. Snow is stopped shy of the 45 yard line by Mike Burke. A little discontent rumbling through the 90,000 fans here. Contingent of gold and black fans in each end zone. That's where I think you might find them on the road. That's where they usually put us, and uh, it's very easy for the Iowa fans to be seen because of the black and gold, and everything else in the stadium's red and white. And Fans are very uh, upset with Earl Bruce, obviously, and uh, every time they get a chance, they, they do uh, show their emotions. Tupa, 7 of 10, intercepted once. 
60-yard gainer for touchdown. Two touchdown throws to Everett Ross. Tupa makes the drop, makes a bad pass. And so covering on that play was Puck. Ellis, the intended receiver, and that brings up a fourth down situation for Ohio State. And Tupa, a very fine kicker with a 43.8 average, but give Marv Cook credit right behind at 43. Well, Marv likes challenges, and they're putting him at punter now, and he's doing a pretty good job with the best uh, punter in the nation. On that last play, Myron Kepi had a big play. He came through uh, really uncontested and put pressure on Tupa, so he had to throw the ball before he wanted to for the incompletion. Marv, five first-half passes to lead the Hawkeyes. Marciano at the Iowa 15-yard line. Hawkeyes did not put a rush on Tupa, going instead for the return. Again, the return is on, and Tupa kicks high and deep. Marciano lets this one go over his head and into the end zone. Oh. Actually, it was a little bit uh, too far. We'll be back with more Iowa football after this. Defensive series so far in the third quarter. The Hawkeyes now have it. First and 10 of the 20. Hartley, the quarterback. Slots to the left side. Harbert uh, near side and Hudson. Set up about five yards behind. He takes the handoff. Tries something at tackle. And they finally drop him at the 21. But a flag is down. Spielman making the tackle. Headlinesman. Crossing the red flag. And the Hawkeyes may have been in motion. Yep. Flag on the play. Procedure penalty against the Hawkeyes, putting the ball back on the 15-yard line. Down remains the same. It's first and 15. Hartley, the handoff and slipping going into the line. Harmon trying to cut to his left, slipped and went down. As we said earlier, it's a worn carpet here. There's not really much for cleats to dig into, and I'm assuming the Hawks uh, are wearing the tennis shoes today. Well, you see right there, he planted his left foot to make the cut, and it just slipped out from under him, and... Uh, uh, it is a difficult surface to run on. And it's a hard surface. Second and ten Hawks still at the 15-yard line. They break huddle. Second and 15. Fans, 90,000 plus here. A rollout this time by Chuck. Down the middle it goes complete. 30-yard line and a hard hit on the receiver. Close to Gerd hit Watkins. Andrew Gerd, freshman. At the 30, just shy. A little less than a yard of a first down. Third but down coming up. Chuck sprints out to the right here, Gene, and uh, really has plenty of time to set up, throw the ball where he wants to. He knows that Travis is going to be coming across the defense and just lays it in for him. Just shy of a first down at about the 29-yard line. Mark Pellini, a hard hit, keeping the Hawkeyes away from a first down. Harmon and Hudson. Pellini from Youngstown, Ohio. Not many freshmen good enough to start here for the Buckeyes. The handoff to Harmon. Breaks it into the secondary a couple of yards. Enough for the first down. Cumbero making the tackle. Cumbero leads this team in just about every defensive department. Seven sacks of the quarterback. 11 tackles for losses for 50 yards. Recruited as a quarterback out of River Forest, Illinois, and highly recruited. Goodman in the Iowa backfield. Grant Goodman of Des Moines. 6'2", 220-pound senior. Hawkeyes with a first down at the Iowa 32. The drop back straight. The pass down the middle. It is complete midfield. The ball popped loose. Harbert's trying to get it, but I think the Buckeyes... Mike Flagg, very unhappy after he made the reception the second time. Mike has coughed up the football. Harbert's tried to get it back for Iowa, but a couple of Buckeyes were there to take it away. And Ohio has it at the Buckeye 40-yard line. Well, that's the same thing that happened in the first half. Uh, you see the, the play. It, uh, he's going to get a lot of pressure from, from Kumaro there. He throws the ball, lays it into Mike Flagg, and just as he turns, the ball hits, uh, or the, the defender hits him with the ball, knocks the ball loose from Mike, and you don't see that very often, especially twice in one game. We move to further action in this series. Ohio State now on the move with Cooper, the lone setback behind Tupa. Wideouts left and right. Cooper, try in the middle. 31-yard line where he is stacked up. An all-stater at Wyandatch, New York. Steve Thomas and J.J. Puck. 
Schuster coming, uh, is he coming back in? Apparently not. The Hawkeyes get Dan Worth in at a linebacker, and Plost is going to get a rest. Schuster on the sideline, limbering up, and I'm sure he'll be back. Big, tough guy from Fairbault, Minnesota. A football, ran track, and was a wrestler in high school. Snow, right tackle, kind of sneaking behind a couple of blockers and advances to the 26. Lead block in there by Zakharov. One of the few footballers you'll recruit from Canada. Kepi and Thomas getting the tackle. Gene, I think uh, the obvious uh, situation now, you see the, the graphics on Snow, uh, 13 rushes, 36 yards, but they obviously want to use the clock because they know what a threat we are offensively when we get the ball, and they're maintaining the ground game right now. Snow now picked up about as much yardage as he had the first half. He's the lone set now. Instead of tied in in motion, Snow going wide, strung out, and he's out of bounds inside the 25. Snow, the ball Snow, the workhorse now. Snow, 12 for 35. And Tupas hit 9 of 13 for 167 and two touchdowns, both to Everett Ross. You see in the replay again here where we, uh, Snow gets the ball and he keeps going down the line of scrimmage. We keep pushing him. I think he, uh, he got just enough yardage here for the first down before he's knocked out of bounds uh, by the Iowa defense. Keep in mind, too, Matt France, their place kicker, has hit 9 of 16, and from 50 yards plus, he's 2 of 2 for the season. First down. Again, the big pullback, Cooper, at the 20. Number 44, George. Pretty obvious. They, they want to play it cozy. They'd like to use up the clock. And maybe they kept out of the end zone. Get France in and try to get three and the lead back. And most teams, when they take a turnover like they did after the flag fumble, would uh, want to strike quick. But here they've just taken the ball, marching very, very methodically down with their running game, and it's working right now. But uh, I'm sure old Bruce is scared if we get the ball. Buckeyes have had only one game in which they've blown out the opponent, and that was uh, Minnesota. A short drop this time and misfired. Ooh, he threw a bullet to Ross. And uh, a little bit unhappy that he didn't make the intercept for the Hawkeyes, Mike Burke. But I don't know, that may have gone right through his hands. That was thrown a mile a minute. I don't think anybody was going to catch that one, Gene. I think also uh, Ross was looking into that sun again and uh, maybe just misjudged the ball. So it's still at the 20-yard line with third and seven upcoming. Hook getting into the Iowa secondary as they nickel back. Greg Brown, of course, uh, missing last week's game because of an infection and not being set for duty. Two for the drop, the hesitation, and it is caught. Touchdown. Ellis in the end zone, just got in the end zone. Tupa took a hit, but too late. And that's three touchdown strikes by Tupa. Two to Ross, and now one to Ellis. And Tupa's taken a lot of criticism here in Ohio because they haven't won their ball games, but uh, he's certainly been on target today. The replay here, you'll see it's just a game of inches here. Uh, Tupa just barely gets the ball up. You see right here, almost hit just as he's throwing it. And at the other end, the game of inches, he just gets in the end zone for Ellis. So nice combination for Ohio State. And so the Buckeyes take the lead back, 2015. Plots to try the point after. And it's good, and it's Ohio State 21, Iowa 15, a 20-yard touchdown strike as France trots off the field. We'll be back with more third-quarter action after this on the Hawkeye Sports Network. Hawkeyes unable to get the first down, and we have Cook now back to putt for the Hawkeyes. Away from Ross. Bounds and Ross is going to let it uh, be down inside the 25 yard line. Sistrunk spots it down for the Hawkeyes. A tough series that time for Hartley. Ohio State really had the blitz on that last play, Mike. Well, the crowd really came alive on the third down and long situation. And, and after, after they got that done, uh, uh, the crowd is even more enthused now. 46 yard punt by Marv Cook. On defense, let's hold him here with 4.04 to go. Third quarter. Hawks have a halftime lead to 15 14, now trail 21 to 15. This is the three backs in the T formation, short yardage up to the middle. They've used Snow, Cooper, Workman, Bryant, 
Huck that time, made the tackle. Michigan 17, Illinois 14. Key game for the Hawkeyes who would like to nail down not only a shot for a very fine postseason trip, but a chance to finish third, maybe second in the Big Ten and break the jakes. It's down to the Hawkeyes here. About 30 years. Second down. The option. The pitch to Snow. Uh-uh. Burke out there to make the tackle. Hawk defense has done a job on the run, but Tupa has pierced the Hawks for three TD passes. Well, that time was the first time we've seen the option play. They've been running the backs in the different backfield actions, but this is the first time they've run the option. I don't know if they've seen something in the Iowa defense, but uh, Iowa covered it very well. Stone now replaced by Vince Workman, who has changed roles as a running back to a wide receiver. They place Cooper five yards behind the quarterback on a third and a pass situation and the rollout by Tupa. He finally lets it go and it's incomplete. So a punting situation as the Hawkeye defense held. One of the few times we've seen Tupa roll out. He's a good athlete. Well, he rolled out that time and should have kept running, I think, Gene. He could have picked up the first down quite easily, and the fans booed a little bit, but uh, rightfully so, because he could have he could have picked up the first down uh, on the run rather than throwing the ball. Been an interesting punting duel between Cook and Tupa. Hawkeyes have not tried to put a rush on Tupa, who sets up usually about 15 yards deep, a good, strong center. And I was... Marciano is at about the 18-yard line. 2.40 remaining third quarter. A low snap this time, but it's handled easily by Tupa. Great kick. Marciano at the 19-yard line. Tries to go outside, cuts back in. Good coverage, and they drop the little guy hard at the 25-yard line. We'll return after this message from the University of Iowa. Hardly the drop. Given the rush, passes incomplete. Tried to hit Harmon. Spielman covering over there, but again, the blitz was on, and what they're trying to do pretty obviously is to prevent Chuck from going deep. Well, we really need to go short, and that's what we tried to do here. Comero, he's really a threat on that blitz, and he just comes in and is trying to eat Chuck alive, and the uh, ball is just a little bit low. Kevin uh, might have been able to catch it, but then, and uh, again, we're going to have to throw that ball short. Ball thrown a little bit low, and Kevin stooping down to pick it up, but couldn't handle it. Second and 10, Hawks on their 37-yard line. Fox stopped with 37 seconds to go. Third quarter, Grant Goodman. Behind Hartley. Slots to the left side. The rollout. Pass down the middle. It is incomplete. I think Watkins, the intended receiver, but... Uh, one of the few balls uh, that, that wasn't near a receiver. Uh, Chuck, Hardly 14 of 28 now. Uh, Chuck's 14 for 28, but he uh, that time just overthrew the receiver, and he's disappointed in himself, but uh, that's going to happen in a ball game like this. Third down and 10. Hawkeyes on their 37-yard line. Big key play here with 32 seconds to go, third quarter. Right now, they are not showing blitz. Bayless in the backfield, the rollout. Bayless going the opposite direction, passes incomplete. Watkins slipped and went down at midfield. I think he could have caught that, but Travis that time, this is not a good surface. Hard, not much traction there. He just slipped and went down. He sure did, and the ball was thrown just a little bit behind him, and as a result of that, he had to try to stop, and he just couldn't do it on that turf, right in the, on the red paint where that big O is, and uh, he obviously slipped. Cook standing at the 23. Ross is back. It's a nice kick. High. Ross moving to his right. Signals for the fair catch at the 23-yard line. Ohio State up to the line of the 23-yard line, Ohio State Territory. Tupa, two setbacks, makes the fake. The rollback, he has time, gets the ball away, complete, tied in. First down at the 35-yard line. Jeff Ellis. 
Ellis coming into the game had caught only one pass, but he's played a good bit of the game in place of Alex Higdon. Well, he's been their main threat as a, from the tight end position, Gene, and uh, Tupa, again, has plenty of time. Ross is on that side also, which is a big threat, but uh, shows to throw to Ellis and makes a reception for a first down. Time runs out in the quarter. With the score, Ohio State 21, Iowa 15. We'll be back with more on the Hawkeye Sports Network after these local messages. We move to further action in the fourth quarter. Five backs for the Buckeyes. First and 10 on Iowa's 42. Wing back, Workman in motion. Two for the long count. Pullback gets the handoff and breaks a tackle and gets him to the Iowa secondary. Cooper. They had him momentarily stop, but he kept chugging away and made another five to the 45-yard line. Well, you see Cooper's strength here, and this is what he's uh, noted for. He's big and strong, typical Ohio State fullback, and he just keeps plugging away and uh, gets a nice gain for about eight yards. Price getting into the lineup. Lance Price, freshman from Toledo. Cooper, eight carries for 22 yards now. Second and three. Price gets the handoff, bucks in, Hate hits him as he reaches the line of scrimmage. I think he's short of the first down. Good hard stop by Hate. A lot of freshmen seeing action this year for Ohio State. Price is from Toledo, six footer, 190 pounder. Off the Iowa bench, Jeff Keppel. And they bring an extra lineman, Sistrunk departing. Snow is back. Back into the lineup, replacing Price. 21-15, your score. Hawks trail with a little over 12 minutes to go. We're in the fourth quarter at Columbus. A little over 90,000 here in the big shoe. The pitch back to Snow, trying to turn the corner. Flag down as he gets to the 27-yard line. Flag thrown to spend pretty much a penalty-free ball game. First major penalty of the ball game, holding against Ohio State, moves it back to the 43. I think Cooper trying to ward off Burke. Third down play now for the Buckeyes. Single running back as Tupa is forced back. He throws deep, and Pipkins is knocked away by Pipkins, and the flag is thrown. That's right. Offensive interference, I think, Gene. Uh, looked to me like Ross was pushing on Pipkins as he was trying to go for the ball. James Pipkins, the youngster from Dallas, good coverage on Everett Ross, who already has caught three touchdown passes, and it's interference against the receiver. Both guys have an equal opportunity for the football. Well, and you'll see on the replay, Tupa has good time. He lays the ball up a little bit more than he has been. Uh, Ross is trying to run under it. Pipkin reads it very well. He's trying to come back for the ball here, and you see the push by Ross with his left arm right, or uh, yeah, Ross with his left arm right there, uh, and that's a penalty against the receiver. And now the second major moves the ball to the Ohio 42. Also a loss of down. Big, big play by the Iowa defense. Marciano at the 10 as Tupa in putt formation inside the Ohio State 30 at about the 27. 11.39 remaining. Hawks trail, 21-15. Field pretty much now in shadow from the big double-deck stadium here in Columbus. Good snap, the rush on, and they're going to stop him back, gets the kick away into the hands of Burke. Burke, Mike Burke knocked out of bounds. The rush on Tupa that time. He miraculously got his foot on the ball, but it didn't go very far. And Matlock made the tackle as Mike Burke returned the block punt. The first time, Mike, that the Hawkeyes have set up for the block. Well, they were coming all the way. Uh, Tupa sees it coming, too. Tries to kick, and then he sees that uh, it might be blocked. Tries again, and finally the third time gets the ball off. It's a line drive. Uh, I think it was tipped by maybe Greg Brown, and then it's uh, hit right into the hands of uh, Mike Burke. Nice reception. Okay, Hawks. Iowa football continues after these local messages on the Hawkeye Sports Network. Hawkeyes now with the break. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. And off goes to Harmon. Harmon cutting back. Gets into the secondary. Pretty good run to the 33-yard line where Holloman stopped him. 
Hawkeyes on the ground. They've moved the ball surprisingly well against one of the better defenses in the Big Ten. Gene, this crowd's really been fairly uh, quiet all day, and uh, with the exception of about two or three plays, and now it seems like they're they're coming alive, realizing that uh, they have to do something to help the team that's uh, that time kind of went backwards rather than down towards the goal line. So uh, the, the Hawks are going to have to be aware of that crowd noise. Pretty good stats on Kevin. 18 carries for 151 yards. Well, uh, Buckeyes in the strange role of not being a contender for the championship. Deep drop this time by Hartley. And all alone, it's Cook. Cook goes out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Marv Cook looking into the sun. There's just a patch over in that corner of the field that's not in shadow. So Cook had to have had a tough time even keeping his eye on the ball. Well, that's a tough catch over there. Chuck throws it. To, he's backing up, and you see the sun. It's just right in his eyes. He really had some ground to turn around and run with it, but he was just trying to concentrate on catching the football, and he did it. Nice reception. The great defensive play on Tupa, and now this pass has really quieted down this crowd of 90,000-plus. Cook now seven receptions for 122 yards. Here's Hudson at the 10. Necktie tackle as he gets to the five-yard line. Hudson at tackle. McCray hitting him high and necktying him down at the five-yard line. Well, that's a great first down uh, gain for Iowa. You see David get the ball, trying to wait for uh, Alexander to throw the block. Then he just turns up field, gets caught around the neck right there, gets down to the five-yard line, and that's an important first down gain. It's the only way you can stop him tackling him high, and that's to get something around the neck as three Hawkeyes come onto the field. Hartley, 15 of 30 for 251 yards. Bayless and Hudson. Got a hurry, Gene. Hawks break huddle. Snap it up. Down to four seconds. Play away just in time. Pass thrown away. Hartley again. Comro, number 14. Stops the clock. That's inconsequential at the moment. But it brings up third down. Hawks need six here, seven, preferably, to take the lead. Four Hawks come onto the field quickly. 18 seconds remaining. Hartley now 15 of 31, 251, and one interception. We need the touchdown, though, Chuck. Fans back into the ball game now as they roar. Iowa coming up to the line of scrimmage. Hartley the clock. Gets the pass away just. Again, the blitz on. Hartley fortunate to get the ball away. Ray Jackson, the free safety, making the defensive play for the Buckeyes. Fourth down. That hurt. Well, Chuck uh, just didn't have quite enough time. He saw his, his open receiver finally at the end, but you see Jackson coming in, and he'll make the tackle on Chuck uh, just as he's trying to throw the football right there and uh, goes into the ground for an incompletion. We're not going for three. We're going for six on fourth down. It's fourth and four, fourth and five and a half for the tying touchdown. Big, big play. Kevin Harmon, David Hudson. High backs behind Hartley. The rollout, the handoff to Hudson. He breaks a tackle. He's on his feet. Did he get the first down? Oh, what a play. Or was it Harmon? Hudson leading. Harmon it was who carried. He's by Chris Spielman. He's very close to the goal line here. Uh, should be a first down, Gene, I believe. And uh, that's a big play. It gives us a first down inside the one-yard line. It's just a good individual effort by Kevin Harmon trying to get in the end zone there. But more importantly, got the first down. And there's only about a half a second left on the 25-second on the clock when we took that playoff. Fantastic play. Boy, give credit to Kevin. And the offensive line. And the offensive line. Amen. But it had to be a power move. Kevin is no little guy, 6'2 and 200, or 6 footer and 200. Now we go into the power eye. And it's Hudson over the top into the end zone. Airborne David Hudson from Waxahachie getting the tying TD. Went right up and over the middle. And for Hudson, his seventh touchdown. You see in the replay that uh, David just kind of takes off. He gets the ball fairly deep in the backfield and then just uh, 
flies over the blocking and the defenders there, and uh, nice individual effort to get in the end zone. Howland, with this point, be the all-time leading Iowa scorer. He takes an easy swing, and it's through, and it's good. Hawks have the lead, 22-21, 9-11 to go, and we'll be back with more Hawkeye football after this. Fourth quarter. Ohio with losses to Indiana, Michigan State, and Wisconsin, the last two back-to-back. -back. They'll be in a state of shock if Hawkeyes can pull this one out. Three losses in a row going into their final at Ann Arbor next week. Here's Tupa making a pretty good pop across the line. Pass complete. Out of bounds inside the Iowa 50-yard line. Snow. Puck covering the near outside to make the tackle. And Snow used to infrequently as a receiver. Only five catches going into the ballgame. Well, there's a fake to Snow, and then he comes out as the receiver. And uh, it's a nice safe pass pattern for him to, to gain a little bit of yardage on it. Uh, nice hit by J.J. Puck knocking Snow out of bounds. Pipkins covering deep, and so the linebacker moved over to cover on that pass. Second and four. Just inside the Iowa 50 at the 47. Snow trying to go outside. Good coverage from the Hawkeyes. He slips by and makes it back up to the 46-yard line. Burt. Very durable running back. I thought they had him pinned down for a loss, a deeper loss, but almost got back to the line of scrimmage. Well, he just keeps running sideways, which isn't going to hurt the Iowa defense too much. And uh, the pursuit again on that, on that sweep play was tremendous by our defensive unit. Kerry Burt, former wingback. Waterloo, senior, 6'1", 210-pounder. Third down, down three. Come on, Hawks, stop me here, just shy of the Iowa 45-yard line. Ibex, working in motion. And the handoff goes. They stop him at the 44-yard line. Snow, Burke, and Puck. Now, what do you do? If you're Ohio State's head coach, Cheryl Bruce, you have a fourth and about two. You have plenty of time, half the quarter remaining. You're behind by a point. Do you gamble or kick? Well, I think Cheryl Bruce is going to go for it. Uh, they feel like they have to win this game, and uh, this is a crucial play for them. It's fourth down and one now, and uh, I'm sure they're going to try to make the first down. Jeff Keppel comes into the Iowa line. Fourth and... Less than a yard. Tight formation. Ross is deep to the near side. And it goes to the fullback. Ooh, close. Let's see where they spot it. That was Snow. Fullback leading. This may require a measurement. Schuster and Quast in on the hit for the Hawkeyes. Gil Marshman says first down. But that was not by much. Gene, that was about the length of the football, or maybe even not a full football. It's a very, very close play. Under seven minutes now, 6.45 to go. Ohio State on the Iowa 43-yard line. Everett Ross covered by Pipkins. He's caught. Two touchdown passes. This time the clip goes to Snow. He cuts back up. Drop though shy of the 40. Snow, Snow obviously uh, was just shaken up on that previous play because he just missed uh, part of one series before getting back in, and he's been the workhorse. Well, he has, and uh, again on this drive, they're just trying to use the clock up and get down to, if nothing else, in field goal position so that they can take the lead again. Snow is 21 of 68. Hawkeyes with a one-point lead. They've got to come up now with a big defensive play. An Iowa timeout, I think a Hawkeye player injured. It could be Kepi. Down on one knee. Kepi leaves the game, shaken up on the last play, and Steve Thomas replaces him a defensive left tackle. Second down for Ohio at the 42-yard line. Tupa back. Harassed it is. Incomplete. Incomplete. Short. Ross tried to pick that one off the turf. And Dave Haight, a good job rushing the passer, Tom Tupa. Well, it sure was. It gave him a lot of pressure, and that, uh, that's what we're going to have to do. We just can't afford to give them a touchdown here, Gene. 
with a little bit under six uh, minutes to go. You see the time that Tupa has. He sets up, and you'll see Dave Haight come in just as he's throwing the ball, enough to distract him. The ball bounces on the turf just in front of Ross as he, as he dives to catch the ball. They had two players working on Joe Schuster, keeping him away from the quarterback. Third now, and eight. Ball on the Iowa 42. Two for the drop, has time. Now he's being harassed, chased. He may run for the first down. Oh, but looked like an Iowa would be tackler. Uh, tackler was tackled himself. As Tupa is down inside the 30 yard line. I don't know whether our replay will catch that, but it looked like an Iowa tackler was hit by a Buckeye player. Uh, Tupa is very, very calm here. You see, he's getting good pressure from the Hawks. And then he sees if he can get the first down by running it and uh, just takes off and tries to get the first down marker and does. And this uh, quarterback for Ohio State's having a great game. Hanks was taken out of the play, but apparently it was a clean block. Ohio State now on the Iowa 28. Five and a half minutes to go, fourth quarter. The Hawks by one. Tupa Snow finds the seam there in the Iowa line on the right side and shoots to the 23. And now the, the Buckeyes doing what they've always liked to do, and that's run between the tackles. Five minutes and two seconds as the Buckeyes huddle back on their 30-yard line. The ball advanced to the Iowa 22 with second and about four. Hawks need that big defensive play, forcing the fumble. <laughs> 52, the Iowa defense. Pull back up the middle, trying to get the first down close to it. Cooper. Cooper playing his last game. Word in the papers last couple of days been the seniors saying they want to play for pride here and this is their last home game. They are not looking ahead to Michigan. They're well, concentrating on this one. Gene, they can't afford to look ahead. They've got to win this game today and, uh, and hopefully uh, try to win again next week. But you're right. The seniors have, have taken charge here today too and been the leadership uh, as far as the momentum and, and the big plays today. Kepi comes back into the Iowa lineup at left tackle. Third and short, Ohio State inside the Iowa 20. Snow, tackle, shoots, first down. Getting behind Stasniak and Poles. Stasniak, a freshman last year, started all 13 games. The ball is just inside the Iowa 15. Four minutes remaining. Well, this is just, uh, again, power on the replay. He knocks over his own uh, tight end there and uh, dives forward for the first down, and that's a big first down. That's uh, inside the 15-yard line. They break huddle. They have only one wide receiver, and that's Workman to the short side of the field. And he's now in motion. Pullback, Cooper, not much there. First down play, J.J. Puck. And Dave Hayden. Hawkeye defense has just done a fantastic job. And uh, coming off the field, Thomas. The three touchdowns by Ohio State have been great pass plays. Tupa hitting Ross in the first half with a pair. And Ellis in the third quarter to retake the lead. And now the Hawks have come back with a lead. And we have three minutes to go. Again, the tight formation with Ross in motion. And here's a Snow. Snow's a secondary. The five scores. Snow got into the secondary. Cut to the outside and goes in for the go-ahead six. in the replay it's a it's a nice effort by snow he gets the ball deep in the backfield picks his hole then sees the opening to the left uh, makes a cut back and it's very difficult to make a tackle when an offensive player does that against you and uh, snows in for a touchdown may go for two here two minutes and 45 seconds remaining 
And Ohio takes a timeout. So the Buckeyes will try for a pair here. They want to boost it up to 29-22, and they set up with two receivers deep near us and two running backs. Now Workman in motion toward the line of scrimmage. It's a reverse, and it doesn't work. It does not work. A little misdirection. And the Hawkeyes save a big two. We'll be back with more fourth quarter action after these local messages on the Hawkeye Sports Network. Amaro's kick going out of bounds on his first try, so now he'll re-kick from the Buckeye 30. Marciano and Harmon move up to the Iowa 15-yard line. Again, two minutes, 45 seconds remain. 27-22, Hawks trail. Omaro has it teed up on the 30, right smack dab in the middle of the field. Kick. He really gets his foot into it. Taking it back at the goal line, Harmon. The 10, the 15, the 20, breaks it out the 30-yard line, hit from behind at the 35. Kevin Harmon almost got it. Broken all the way. A touchdown saving tackle by Jim Peel. Uh, Kevin's going to leave the ball game. He's uh, shaking up from the play. I don't think it's anything serious, but that's the first time he's been in on the kickoff uh, return team so far today, and a uh, good choice to have him back there. You see him get the ball just uh, near the goal line, makes a nice move to his left, gets forward to uh, 35-yard line. Real good field position now for the Hawkeyes. Good job waiting for his blockers to form. We have Bayless in a tailback now. The fake uh, to Bayless. Across the line, complete now to Bayless on the pass play, and he stopped to the 41. Comero making the tackle. Bayless in now for the shaken up. Kevin Harmon as flag comes in. 16th play, 75 yard drive, long time, 621. And Snow getting in from 14 yards out. Second and four. Fox at their 40 yard line. Quick start by Iowa. Hartley. It's complete and out of bounds. Flag at the 45 yard line. Stopped by Sean Bell. Clock stopped a minute 58. And there's a flag on the play, and uh, I think that uh, Ohio State had too many people on the field. Earl Bruce is quite upset within the assistant coaches, but uh, two men came on and only one came off, and I'm sure there's too many men on the field. Flag on the play. Buckeyes with a ball now on the Buckeye 30. Penalty for having 20 men on the field. Illegal participation following a completion to flag. And the handoff goes to Harmon cutting outside. The flag goes out. Oh, Harmon oh. hit after he left the field. He was hit well after he was pushed off the, si uh, off the field to the far sidelines. But it looked as though an Iowa player was in motion before the snap. Hawkeyes penalized back to the 40-yard line for holding on that last play. So it's now a first and 20. A minute 53 remaining. Hartley, the drop. Pretty good pressure. Ball is dropped. I think covered by the Hawkeyes at midfield. Ohio State has done a tremendous job defending their goal line on the pass. Ball is at the Iowa 49 now, and timeout being taken by the Hawkeyes. Yeah, and Hartlett got an awful lot of pressure that time. Yeah, he did fumble the ball, and luckily David Hudson and looks like Greg Davis were on the ball. Hawkeyes now at midfield with a second and 31. Pressure on Hartley. Defenders are spread out. Deep drop now by Chuck. He's got to go deep. Down the middle, it is complete. Cook, and he goes out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Clock stopped with a minute 24 to go. Cook, Dumas knocking him out of bounds, but key, key play, Hartley to Marv Cook. You know, I have a feeling there's going to be several key plays here, but uh, Hartlib's looking left. Uh, Marv Cook's coming across field, gets to his uh, position along the sideline, and uh, catches the ball, realizes he can get some more ground, gets a couple more yards before he gets out of bounds. Great reception. Defender of the left corner was covering Harbert's deep. Third down play now on the 25-yard line, 
And they give the ball to who, Kevin? Short yardage, Spielman making the tackle. That brings up fourth and short. Hawks have two timeouts remaining, but we're down to a minute 16. Hawks take the timeout. Fourth and three, Hawks on the Ohio 23. Hartley, 18 of 35, 297 yards, but he's been kept out of the end zone. A minute, 16 seconds remain. Clint Early right. Travis Watkins coming deep to the near side of the field. Out of your picture. One setback behind Chuck Hartley. They're coming. The pass down the middle. It's complete. 15-yard line. Hawks have a first and 10. And it's to you-know-who. Number 84, Marv Cook. Now the crowd quiets down. We're down to a minute 10. Gene, you'll see on the replay, the nice thing about this, he's open, but then when he catches the ball, watch the way he tucks the ball under. He's going to make sure that nobody's going to knock that ball loose from him. Both arms over the ball and hands. Uh, nice reception. Hawkeyes now on the Ohio 15. Pro set. The drop by Chuck. Looking, he's hit. Humro at the 24. Blind side, Cumro made the hit. I was asking for a quick timeout with 47 seconds to go. Hawkeyes have used their final timeout. We're down to 47 seconds. Scrimmage. The Buckeye 24. High backs. Two wideouts. Chuck Hartley. The pitch back to Kevin Harmon. He is dropped at the 28-yard line. 40 seconds to go. I don't know. He was scrambling to get out of bounds. Ray Jackson making the tackle. Hawks have got a hurry. 32 seconds remaining. Iowa with a touchdown can win this game. But they're out of timeouts. Hartley frantically calling signals at the line of scrimmage. Makes a drop. Passes. Incomplete. Stops the clock with 16 seconds to go. Cumbro was back to harass. It was short inside the 10. Hartley has just had a scramble for his life. Well, if he just would have had another second or two there, he did have Travis Watkins coming open uh, across the middle. See the replay of the pitch uh, to Kevin. And nice play by Kumaro, who makes a, uh, just a shoestring tackle on Kevin. And uh, it's a big play because the clock kept going there. We're not only down to 16 seconds, this is fourth down. Ball is at the 29. This is it, folks. Can Hartley and the Hawks do it? Hartley sprinting back. Into the, it's caught, it's in, the Cook. five! Yes, touchdown. touchdown! I can't believe it! A touchdown to Marv Cook! Holy cow! Can't believe it! Six seconds to go. Hartley to Cook. And the Hawks have the lead. 28 to 27. What a play. I can't believe it, Mike. What a play, Gene. Just unbelievable. You talk about a big play. A oh, lot of pressure man. here. You see on the replay that uh, Chuck knows where he's going to go. He's been going there all day. And that's Kamar of Cook who makes a nice catch right in front of the defender. And then it's just a great individual effort. He says, I'm going to score on you guys, and he does it. Gets in the end zone for six points. Clearly, Sean Bell could not hold him when he made the catch. Houtland will try to add another. And the clock shows six seconds to go. It is good. The Hawkeyes, what a great comeback by Iowa. The first time in 13 quarters... The Buckeyes have been scored on in the air. 29-27 Hawks. Well, you see again uh, from a little different angle here, Chuck's going to drop back, and he's been getting great pressure up until this point. But he steps in there firm. You see Kumaro coming right at him. And again, a great effort to ball, a little, throw him a little bit behind him, and then that uh, holding onto the ball again, covering himself up into the end zone. Well, the two Buckeyes hit him high, and Cook is just too tough to go down on a high tackle. See another, Gene, you see another angle here. It's just a, it's a treat. I could watch this all day. You see Marv get the ball. And watch him cover up this ball in between the two defenders right there into the end zone, and they just can't keep him out. And the PAT by Houtland broke Tom Nichols' record, the scoring record. What a day for Houtland. And Hartland. 
played and took in all the other Hawks. Well, and Gene Hayden Fry, this is a, this has never been done before in 30 years. And Iowa wins it 29-27. We'll be back with more comments in a moment. In these days of self-service gas stations, computerized banking, and understaffed stores, it seems that no one has the time for personal service. The lead at the end of the first half on Houtland's field goal with four seconds to go. Then the winning touchdown pass to Marv Cook with six seconds to go. Mike, you couldn't have written a better script. Well, it's just a great, great win. You see uh, Hayden on the screen uh, giving Chuck a, a hug, and uh, that's just a great individual effort by Chuck Hartlib and a uh, great offensive team. Uh, display today with Marv Cook, the, the big receiver, but remember the fourth down and uh, four yards to go with Kevin Harmon going into the one-yard line and set up a score by David Hudson. Just a great game and a great uh, great win here. First one in over 30 years. Uh, Gene, you got to be happy. Oh, great. Eight and three, the Iowa record and five and two in the Big Ten. Coach Hayden Fry will be back with post-game comments after this on the Hawkeye Sports Network. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I hugged everything in that dressing room. <laughs> and I praise the Lord. You think the good Lord wasn't smiling on us? Gee, what a football game. I've been associated with some great ones in 36 years. But I never had one that was more meaningful to a group of young men. Just incredible how they kept hanging in there with penalties, quarterbacks getting sacked because we couldn't block the guys. And before I get talking too much about us, let me congratulate Ohio State for a super great football game. Coach Bruce is a personal friend because I think he's a great gentleman as well as a class coach. And uh, I told him before the game, you know, I was really disturbed with all the so-called pressure and the other things. Uh, all he's done is the best job in the Big Ten since I've been here. We've tried everything in the world every year to win. We could never put Ohio State. We caught them at our place once. But today, the Hawks weren't to be denied because they kept coming back against the clock and penalties and big play after big play after big play. And Chuck Hartley been, uh, and uh, Marv Cook did it. And uh, never seen Kevin Harmon run as hard on one leg. He just sucked it up and ran hard. And, uh, you know, the, the defense, when they had to play, we, we obviously had some breakdowns, and but you got to give, uh, give Ohio State credit for taking advantage of the breakdowns. When we made one, they capitalized on it, and that's the mark of a real fine football team. 